Hi, in the last video I showed how to uh, put your own texture onto one of the Omniverse materials, but I thought what I'd also do is show how to create a more portable material called a USD preview surface. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to create a mesh. Um, there are shapes here, by, by the way, for cube, but, but uh, the UV mapping is different. So use a mesh cube. Um, if I come in... I, the other day I showed dragging a material, my favorite carpet, up onto the cube and you can get it like this. If you go into the looks folder, right click, open in material graph, it comes up and shows. But uh, what it does is it feeds it into these MDL inputs and if you take this USD file and ship it off somewhere else, it's almost certainly not going to understand it. These MDLs are special for Omniverse and nobody else understands them. So how can we create a, a um, material that everybody will understand? I'm gonna leave that one there for the moment, but if you come up here and you right click create material and you come down to USD preview surface texture, it sets up a lot of it for you. And what this uh, USD preview surface is a sort of like a generic, uh, material definition that pretty well everybody who supports USD understands, so it's more portable. And so they've gone least common denominators. It doesn't support everything, but it's got the most common stuff. So uh, let's have a look at this in the open and material graph. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And it creates a number of nodes. So what are these nodes? Well, the first node in this graph is reading uh, ST. Uh, ST is sort of similar to UV, good enough for this conversation. So it's the XY coordinate on the PNG file or whatever you've got to get the coordinate. So it's going to take that as input and then it feeds it into these different nodes. These different nodes are what they call a UV texture. So yes, input is ST, but they call it a UV texture. That's really consistent. Um, and so there's one you can load up for the roughness, metallic, diffuse, and normal. Now, I don't have any of those textures. I've just got a flat uh, map. So I'm going to get rid of the normals. Um, I'm going to get rid of the metallic. I'm going to get rid of the other one. And so I've got a fairly simple shader graph where I've got the coordinate coming in. It's going to look up the PNG file to get the pixel color at that point. And it feeds it off into this USD preview surface which then feeds off into the output. So pretty straightforward. So if I click then on the diffuse color, um, one of the fields in here is a file. And so I'm gonna type that in. I'm gonna to go to wallpaper.png and I didn't wallpaper.png. There it is, select. And now if I drag this onto it, I've got the cube with the wallpaper. Now, um, if it's really a wall, you just grab the cube and um, if you take like the resize, I'd make it sort of like thinnish so you can't really notice it. And so that's how you can sort of like create a wall out of it. So uh, is there anything else you can do with preview surfaces? Well, there's one other thing I find uh, frequently useful, which is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do a USD preview surface and there's one called a transform 2d and I'm going to drop it over here what I'm going to do is take this st which is the xy coordinate I'm going to feed it into this 2d transform and take the output and feed it into the st now if I click on the 3d transform it's got things like translate rotate so if you do a rotate you'll start noticing the material rotates so you can put it on an angle but hang on a second you've got all these black areas what's going on well, if you come over into the texture lookup, this is where the wrap S and wrap T values come up. Um, you can do various things. I'm going to pick repeat, which basically means go round and round. Now you can use things like mirror and it might uh, make it flow a little bit better, but it's going to be sort of like right way up, wrong way up. And it's a bit, it's a bit of fun. We're just messing around. So if I come back then to the transform 2D and fiddle around with the rotation, you, know, you get this reflective sort of a uh, thing. But I wanna see multiple on the box. Well, this is where scale can come in. So if I set scale to two by two, um, I've got the pattern on there twice. So 
so I'm going to get rid of that. If I come back over here, it's a little bit easier to see with repeat. You get this sort of tiling effect. And so if you want to put this pattern in a tiling effect, you'll need to add one of these USD transform 2Ds and you just feed that in. And you can feed that into all the other texture maps as well, because what it's doing is it's telling the XY coordinate to use and it's basically repeating the same sample for different places of this one. It's uh, uh, it multiplies the coordinates by the scale factor and so it's it's going around and around and around in this um, PNG file to sample all the points. That's what the repeat uh, is for. Okay, so that all sounds well and good and that would be a more portable way of doing a, a material. Fairly simple, doesn't have all the um, clear coat and all the fancy effects, but it's more portable. So what else could we do? Well, I got this carpet one. One of the things that uh, Maddie shared uh, once in a previous video is you can do hacky things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag all that shader graph up into the carpet. And what the idea here is, and I've opened the graph down here, and so now I've got a my USD preview surface, and I've got the uh, Omniverse specific shader. Now the Omniverse shader goes fed into those MDL inputs. Well, I can take the outputs of surface and displacement and feed them into the standard outputs of this shader. Now, if I save this out and I take it off to another system that understands USD, it will ignore these MDL inputs because it doesn't understand them. And so the USD preview surface will kick in if you're in something other than Omniverse and the Omniverse advanced material will kick in if you're inside Omniverse. And just to prove it, if I go in there and delete the shader, it drops back to the other one. Uh, I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but this is just sort of like a little trick. It's uh, Omniverse specific, but it means you can have portable shaders and an Omniverse specific shader feeding into the same graph and it'll use the more advanced one if it can. Otherwise, it'll fall back to a USD preview surface, which is more portable. That was a cute little kit. Thanks, Manny.